Excuse me while I do some uh, paperwork. Uh, well, business work. Ah, I gotta re un redo this. Okay. So. Everything is updated now. So, as per usual, chat, please let me know if you have any questions. And uh, my first time reading, we'll see if, what these people have to say. Color Hallucination in Defense of Externalist Representationalism. In a recent paper, Laura Gao raised a new and interesting problem for externalist representationalism, the conclusion of which is that its proponents are unable to provide an ep acceptable account of the phenomenal character of color hallucination. The phenomenal character of c color hallucination. So that means they can't explain what it's like to see a, a hallucination that includes color. In contrast to Gao, we do not believe that the problem is particularly severe, indeed that there is any problem at all. Thus our aim is to defend externalist representationalism against the problem raised by Gao. To this end, we will first reconstruct our reasoning and then show that it poses no real challenge to externalist representationalism. To set the stage for Gao's problem, we will start by briefly listing some assumptions on which there is no disagreement. Representationalism is the claim that the phenomenal character of perceptual experience E, so is experience E, is determined or even identical to the property that is represented by E. So what is represented by E is what you perceive. Perceiving is representation. Externalist representationalists further claim that the property represented by E is an external property, that is, a proper property that, if instantiated at all, is instantiated by objects in the external world. Applied to color experiences, this means that the alleged yellow quail that qualia friends believe they are sensing while having an experience of a yellow object, so this is yellow qualia, that qualia friends believe they are sensing while having experience of a yellow object is identical to the external property whose instantiation their experience represents. So yeah, when you see yellow, you are seeing some yellow, I guess a qualia is a single qual, qualia is more than one, maybe a quail, qu uh, a quail is a single yellow swatch. Okay, and so what you are experiencing is identical to the external property uh, that is the yellow thing has. And what is this property? Of course, the property of being yellow, as is typically instantiated by the material object in the external world, such as sunflower, cheese, and lemons. External yellowness, so to speak. The philosophically interesting point, then, is that the externalist representationalists identify the alleged properties of our experiences with the quite ordinary properties of material objects in the external world. Okay, so there's yellow things, and the property of being yellow is a property that things have. Okie dokie. At this point, however, the externalist representationalist has to face the question of what external yellowness say actually is. One widespread view is that colors are so-called response-dependent properties. That is, the property of being yellow is nothing more than the property of having the disposition to evoke an experience that instantiates phenomenal yellowness in normal observers under normal conditions. Externalist representationalists cannot accept this view, however, as it would force them into a vicious circle. At least, it would be explanatory questionable to claim that on the one hand that phenomenal yellowness is identical to the external yellowness, while also claiming that external yellowness is the disposition to evoke the experience, experiences that instantiate phenomenal yellowness. Yeah, so basically, if there's a, something yellow in the world, like I guess my back wall is yellow here, you can see this wall behind me, that, yeah, it's yellow. I mean, the lights are also kind of yellow. But, like, so you can see the wall is yellow. Now, you can say it has the real property there, but then are you also saying it has the property? Evolve yourself. What's up? What's up? Um, doing okay. How are you? Um, welcome back in. Um, we're reading something about, um, what is this? We're reading something on, uh, color hallucination and externalist uh, representationalism. Ah, good. I hope you eat well. Mind me asking what you're eating? I haven't really... I didn't eat much uh, this afternoon. Yeah, we'll find out. I just got into it. They're basically uh, talking about what externalist representation is at the moment. So. 
Yeah, so basically, they're, they're saying, um, Italian, oh, that sounds fantastic, of all of yourself. I could use some, like, good, like, spicy sausage. <laughs> Anyone who doesn't know, evolve yourself, um, is one of the, uh, streamers, uh, on Twitch that, um, he does meditation, he does chess, he's an excellent chess teacher, and he also streams philosophy sometimes. So, it's like, you, if you want, um, and he also does poetry. So, like, if you want um, a little bit more philosophy, and I think his specializations are, like, mind and uh, metaphysics, something else. But, um, yeah, so you can go check out Evolve Yourself, um, yeah, for more good content. Anywho, yeah, so feel free to ask questions. I, I don't know what's going on. Philosophy of Science. Yeah, we just did a paper on time, actually, and it ticked the hell out of me because, you know, whatever. But, like, this is at least a little closer to philosophy of science. That's right. So, mind, metaphysics, philosophy of science. Uh, the lovely philosophy of science. I used to like it more. Now it just makes me angry. Everything just makes me angry. I'm a grumpy person. Anywho, read more philosophy. <laughs> uh, okay. At this point, however, the externalist representationalist has to face the question of what external yellowness say actually is. Okay, wait. This is what we just read this part. Yeah, so you can't tell them, like, if it's an actually a property in the world, then you can't also say that it's a something that is causing you to have a phenomenal experience because then you're talking about what the... It's a reactive thing. It's what's happening to you. Then it's not just the uh, being yellow. All right, so that they got a problem there trying to figure out if yellowness in the world is just yellowness or if it is something that makes people looking at it experience yellow. Because then it wouldn't also, then it would be redundant in some sense to say it's both yellow, but it causes us to see yellow, but that's not the same thing. Thus, externalist representationalists are well advised not to consider colors as response dependent, but to embrace color physicalism according to which colors are identical to surface spectral reflectance properties. However, as Gao notes, the colors we experience do not map one-to-one -one onto particular surface reflectance pro profiles, but rather we often experience two or even more different surface reflectance profiles as being exactly the same color. Thus, color physicalists do not simply identify colors with the surface reflectance profiles, but rather with disjunctions of surface reflectance profiles. The property of being yellow is then identified with the disjunctive property of having surface reflectance reflectance profile a or surface reflectance profile b or say etc as many things that we might consider to be yellow because there's not just one surface reflectance thing that we consider to be yellow as previously stated none of these assumptions are controversial between gao and us thus for the sake of argument let us agree with gao that externalist representationalists are committed to the view that phenomenal yellowness is identical to the disjunctive property of having surface reflectance profile a b or c and where A, B, or C could be any number of things, but there's probably a finite number of them. We will now turn to the issues that are controversial between Gao and us. To introduce the problem, Gao compares two situations. A normally caused a veridical experience of a yellow plastic duck. I mean, you can just think of the yellow wall behind me. Like, you think you see yellow, it looks yellow. Or you can think of a ducky duck, 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 duck. A squeezy, yeah, squeaky duck and a hallucination of a yellow plastic duck. In both the veridical and hallucinatory case, the experience in question represents the property of being yellow instantiated. Thus, in both cases, the property of being yellow makes it into the content of the subject's experience. But how, Gao asks, does the property of being yellow make it into the content of the experience? After all, the property of being yellow is a disjunctive property. So the externalist representationalist owes us an explanation. That's fair. So if yellow is all this stuff and we're getting a sort of a group of things, that means you're doing logic and then you're doing logic and then reasoning yellow. But that's not what we think happens when we see yellow. Okay. In the normally caused vertical case, says Gao, the explanation is straightforward. The duck seen by the subject has the property of being yellow in virtue of having one of the surface reflectance profiles listed in the disjunction. Let us say it has the surface reflectance profile B. Since the subject sees the duck, her experience is caused by the duck's surface reflectance profile B. Hence, the subject is relevantly related to one of the disjunct 
objects be belonging to the property of being yellow. Yeah, so it's a particular shade of yellow. You don't see all of them, you see one of them. That's what you see, that one shade of yellow, but it is a shade of yellow. And we're calling yellow this sort of combination of all the different shades of yellow we call yellow. Consequently, says Gao, the subject is aware of the disjunctive property yellow by being aware of the particular surface spectral reflectance property, which is instantiated by her environment. Yeah, you know it's one of the yellows. According to Gao, this explains how the property of being yellow makes it into the content it piggybacks on one of the disjuncts. Yeah. This kind of explanation, however, is not available in the case of hallucination, for in this case, none of the relevant surface spectral reflectance properties A, B, or C are instantiated in the subject's environment. Consequently, the hallucinating subject is not relevantly related to any of the disjuncts belonging to the property of being yellow, so there is nothing on which the property of being yellow could piggyback. This would seem to present a problem for externalist representationalists. Okay, so when you're hallucinating something, there is no wavelength that is getting um, sent out. So how could there be some sort of instantiated version of being yellow in terms of wavelengths? So yeah, if the externalist has to say, look, there's a wavelength, but there ain't no wavelength, like that's A, B, or C, or particular wavelengths uh, profiles of being yellow. But in a hallucination, you can see a yellow duck, but there is no wavelength. It's like you're imagining the wavelength, but there is no wavelength. So how is um, that makes so that, that's hard. So if you actually are hallucinating, you actually see the duck, but then you couldn't have actually seen a wavelength. And so that seems like that's a disconnect for the externalist representationalists. It should be noted, however, that this problem is based on the particular reading that Gao gives to externalist representationalism. Gao is not explicit about it, but gives what she says in her paper. It looks as if she understands it to mean that the representational content of any token experience is determined by the external property by which the token in question is actually caused. In short, Gao seems to understand externalist, representationaliz externalist rep representationalism as follows. Gao's thesis, the property represented by an experienced token, and for those who don't know the lingo, a, a token is any particular instance of a thing. So like this is a, like there are many cups, but this is one cup and this is a token cup. And it's of a type. So it's to token type. So that one cup right there, that is a token of the type cup. All right, so the property represented by an experienced token is determined by the external property by which the token in question is actually caused. Okay, in our view, the problem for Gao is that Gao's thesis does not adequately, adequately reflect externalist representationalism. Neither Dresky, Lycan, Tai, nor any other externalist representationalist that we know of claims that the representational content of a token experience is determined by the external property by which the token is in question is caused. Thus, Gao's problem is based on a philosophical position which externalist representationalists do not hold. Even worse for Gao, if we instead take as a basis what externalist representationalists actually say about how experiences are experiences acquire their representational content, then the problem entirely evaporates. All right, so they're saying basically Gao strawmanned the uh, represent externalist representationalist. She, I think it's a she, but whatever. Gao said that they have this thesis up here that they hold this, and apparently none of them do. So it was a straw man. Well, let's see what the authors say these folks do say. Externalist representationalism is a claim about types of experiences, not tokens. A token experience, as externalist representationalism might be paraphrased, inherits its content from the type to which it belongs. Abstracting from all the differences that may exist among the various authors, one might say that, according to externalist representationalism, the content of a given experience token, so that means the experience token is the uh, individual ducky that you're seeing, of a certain type, is determined not by its actual cause, but by the property which would have caused tokens of that type under certain conditions. <laughs> Wait, so the property of being a yellow rubber ducky is caused by the type yellow rubber ducky being instantiated under the condition of there actually being a yellow rub rubber ducky there. That's kind of hard. Maybe in like the more fundamental case of like yellow, but like if you get a little bit more um, 
like it, it depends how wide so like the property of being yellow it, that's like the type of being yellow is then instantiated by the token of the yellow surface on the duck maybe and then you understand what yellow is because you understand the type yellow that's what they're saying that you understand the concept of yellow and that's where you're getting the idea of yellow and then it gets the it, the actual instantiation the rubber ducky is what's doing it um side flip uh welcome in welcome in is it possible col color is multiple things but we are only using one word and that's the problem i don't know like what you exactly mean by multiple things but like i'd say yes the, the color is definitely more than one thing um so this this is like a, a disambiguation problem like what exactly do we mean by colors because i think some people would really want to say colors are just the wavelengths i think that's maybe what the representationalists want to go for but other people would want to say maybe more than that um so I think people in this literature are trying to, you know, define exactly what they mean here. And maybe they're going to say what that mean is right here, too. Um, so I don't I mean, I'd agree that color is multiple things, but they're going to sort of narrow in on like the one sort of thing that they want to talk about. Yeah. So I think what they want to talk about is going to be a narrow definition. And now, how fair is that narrow definition going to be? I don't know, like to the general phenomena of color. Now, is color multiple things? Like, if you have a further, like, follow-up on that, let me know. But, I mean, there's multiple ways to take that. Is, like, color what we perceive in our heads? Is color in the world? They're trying to define certain things there, but maybe you can have both. I don't know. Okay. So, yeah. So, the property would, would have caused tokens of that type under certain conditions. So, like, the color yellow is the wavelengths, but those particular wavelengths is what they're talking about of being yellow. Lichen's psychosemantic schema is a good starting point to make this clear. A sensation represents greenness, says Lycan, if and only if this sort of sensation is normally caused by green physical objects. So this is a green physical objects cause a sensation that represents greenness. Of course, this is not an elaborate theory of representation and Lycan does not want it to be understood that way. It is merely a general scheme that awaits a more precise specification. For example, Ty's view could be rendered as replacing the schematic normality clause with a clause like this normally caused by green objects, the schematic normality clause with a clause to the effect that the sort of sensation in question is caused by green physical objects under optimal conditions, whereas Dretzky's view could be rendered as replacing the schematic normality clause with a clause to the effect that the sort of sensation in question is caused by green physical objects under conditions for which the visual system was designed and in which it performs its biological function. However, one specifies a like in scheme, though, it should be clear that what determines content according to externalist representationalists is not the actual causal relation which exists between the experience token and the currently instantiated properties in the subject's actual surroundings, but the truth of certain counterfactuals regarding experience types and properties, the latter of which do not need to be currently instantiated in the subject's actual surroundings. I don't know who this Lycan is. Um, I mean, I could... Let's see, what page am I on? I'm on page 5. Let's go find down the bottom. Lycan W. Um, so I don't know if this is a W Lycan, if that's who you're talking about. Is this right? Where am I? Yeah, down here. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... However, one specifies Lycan's theme, it should be clear that what determines content... Okay, so... Yeah, so it's not so much that, well, what is not the, like, simple causal relation of the yellow wavelengths, but it has to do with our visual system and the situation. Uh, oh, he's a big dog in philosophy of language. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so this is the sort of thing, like, where I think this relate. I'm sure it relates to philosophy of language. I, yeah, I'd like to see more about that stuff, too. But anywho, so just kind of what the what's going on here is it says, look, 
you see green when there's a green thing in the world and the whole system is set up for you to see green like you're looking at it under optimal conditions or in like the correct biological conditions or things like that so it doesn't actually have to be instantiated because or the instantiation claim about what is green in the world has more to do with the the context and so it's not merely the uh, causal structure of the property of the surface Okay, if the foregoing is correct, Gao's analysis of the normally caused veridical experience of a yellow plastic duck is already flawed from the outset. Recall that Gao claims that the property of being yellow makes it into the content of the normally caused veridical experience, uh, experience by virtue of the fact that the subject is relevantly related to the particular surface spectral re reflectance property instantiated by the plastic duck. Thus, Gao suggests the, that the content of the normally caused veridical experience is determined by the particular surface spectral, spectral reflectance property whose instantiation actually causes the experience token. But in light of what has just been said above, this is simply incorrect. According to the externalist representationalism, the content of a normally caused veridical experience token is determined by the property which would have caused tokens of the relevant type under the such and such conditions. And so the author here is claiming there's this conditional thing that Gao has uh, missed. It's an important input, but you also need a box to turn input into output. What exactly do you mean? Like... The, the context here, I think, is what the author is claiming is important. So is that what you mean by, like, the box to, uh, like, the sort of the context or what the situation is working with? Yeah, I'm not sure, Sipes. You have to give me a little bit more uh, details on what you mean. I mean, the author is just saying there's more to it than just the uh, wavelength that is getting, like, input, like, or is getting reflected off the... Uh, like the yellow ru rubber duck to there's more to it than just the wavelength of light getting hit off the yellow duck and hitting our eyes okay certainly in the case of a normally caused experience the property that actually causes the experience coincides with the property that w that would have caused the experience of the same type under the relevant conditions but one should not conclude from this that in general the content of any experience token is determined by the property that actually causes it the property which enters into the content of a given experience token cannot be identified just by looking at the property by whose instantiation the experience token in question is actually caused. That is simply wrong. the wrong place to look. Yeah, so what the author is saying here, basically, yes, yellow can show up from wavelengths, but that is not the only factor, and so there can be other things. Rather, one must look at the property which is such that it would have caused tokens of the relevant type under favorable conditions, be they described as normal, like an optimal tie, or such that the sensory system can successfully perform its biological function. And so I guess right here is where the uh, author is getting there out. Because hallucinations are failures of biological functions. Because it's not correctly working. And so if you are hallucinating, you are clearly you know, doing something outside of your normal biological function. Okay. And so that's how the authors could say hallucinations work is that the situation, the context matters right there. What was that? Oh, alar alarms going off. Thus, our deeper diagnosis is that Gao confuses the property that actually causes an, causes an experience token with the properties that enter into its content. Gao seems to think that externalist representationalists are committed to the view that the properties that enter into the content of an experience token are determined by the properties whose instantiation of the token in question is actually caused, but this does not adequately reflect the position of externalist representationalists. They do not claim that one's current experience token has the property of being yellow in its content because it is actually caused by something yellow. Rather, they claim that one's current experience token has the property of being yellow in its in its content because it belongs to an experience type whose tokens would have been caused by something yellow if conditions had been favorable. Thus, the answer to Gauss' question, how does the property of being yellow make it into the content of a hallucination of a yellow plastic duck, is quite simple. It makes it into the way, it makes it way into the content by virtue of the fact that the experience token in question belongs to a type whose tokens given for favorable conditions are caused by yellow physical objects no piggybacking required problem solved okay 
So basically they're saying, look, why do we have experiences of yellow? It's because, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on the hmm there, evolve yourself. It's because, look, there's things that are yellow, but that's a sort of a type that we are used to. And we have experiences of yellow when we get experiences, instantiations, tokens that, you know, do that. But we have the experience of being yellow because it's kind of a experience of a type. It bl it belongs to a type right here. The token in question belongs to a type. And the idea, the question then would be, of course, how are we getting the concept of yellow from the type? I don't really know. And how, what's the connection between the token and the type that can cause us? They just say it does here. So the fact that you are have a yellow ducky is an instance of a type of yellowness that gives us the experience of this. And so a hallucination is the sort of thing that would be giving us the experience of the yellowness because it is a token of the type, the hallucination. But yeah, I'm not entirely sure we're getting types into our heads. Like, where are these types? It just seems very platonic. Like, we've got inst individual in uh, instances of some sort of platonic ideal of the yellow and that is what is uh, giving us the idea of the yellowness and so when you hallucinate of course that's not a veridical experience but it is um, basically a token of the type of yellowness so when you hallucinate a ducky you're hallucinating the token of the yellowness um, of the type of yellow things but I find the um, sort of this platonic analysis here is a little disconcerting to me but still that's okay um if you're a platonist maybe this is fine because you know yeah that's it duckies um of course i don't know exactly what gao's argument was and this gao's thesis the property represented by an experience token so an individual ducky is determined by the external property by which the token in question is actually caused so the yellowness is caused by the wavelengths of light and clearly, there's more to it than that. Everyone said there was more to it than that. And so Gao is wrong because, of course, you can get different wavelengths of light but experience yellow even if they're not yellow wavelengths for whatever reason. Like, because, you know, that's how our brains work. It's not always yellow that you're looking at when you see something that's yellow. Um, so they're wrong in a narrow sense. Are they completely wrong, though? Like, how do we actually... Um, think that we see like a yellow rubber ducky and uh yeah i don't know if i have any strong feelings on this this sort of area of philosophy is uh interesting to me but side flip says i feel like this is a whole long equation that through complication size the fact that it divides by zero not sure it actually means anything i'm not sure it means anything either this is an internal question in some sense they're arguing between themselves excuse me but it it raises the question look if you see a yellow ducky and you're thinking yellowness is like the wavelengths of uh the light that gets reflected off the yellow ducky well how do you explain hallucinations then because if you can there ain't no wavelengths of light then. It's just in your head. And so, doesn't that tell you something that the yellowness is just in your head? So, the fact that these people have made it very sort of complicated, um, oh, it's both. Okay, that's fine then. But that's what the uh, Gao person was saying, that the hallucination is just piggybacking on this other one. And the other people don't like that. They want to stick to their guns and say, no, that's not what's happening here. Um... You know, the philosophers don't want to say the yellowness is in two spots. That doesn't seem philosophically, uh, they don't like that, just put it this way. Because they want to say, where is the yellowness? Is it both in your head and in the world? Well, why, Where? what's yellow then? Is there two things that are yellow and they exactly line up, but they are not exactly the same? And the philosophers don't like to do that. They want to say, look, there is one yellowness. Um, and wherever it may be, is it in the world? Is it in our head? We don't know, but we're trying to figure that out. Um, yeah.
Yeah. So. So yeah, I I I see what you mean. That um. The divide by zero, the right that's going on right here. They're saying, look, yes, it's caused by something in the world, but that's a type, and we see the type, and the any individual yellow thing is just a token of that, and so. But what we see is the type in some sense. Now, this is why I don't like it. That's a concept. A type is not an actual object. Like, this is an actual cup. Like, cup. All right? Cup. Fine. It's a purple cup. I have never seen a type of a cup. I've only seen individual cups. And so this is the sort of thing that they're doing is they're trying to say, well, no, no, you're not seeing individual cups. You're seeing a token of the type, the type of being cup, a purple cup. And so I find this um, worrisome because I've never seen a type of anything. I've only seen individuals. Now, how do we get the concepts in our head? Because we only ever experience individual things. Um, that's a hard question. Like, And I think Evolve Yourself was pointing out that there's a big philosophy of language thing. Like, how does any word have meaning? This is what happens is, well, any individual word is an, a, a token of the type of of what the the word itself means overall. Um, and that's where the philosophy of language comes in. Um, this type token thing. So I'm just trying to figure out how to uh, parse the uh, color prop property here. I'm not sure. Like, I'm not sure that... Uh, yeah, if you're willing to s swallow... Like if you if you're willing to agree that you see types of things and not tokens, like because we only ever see individual tokens, we've never actually seen a type, but somehow we get these concepts, these get these types of things, um, these concepts of things, and we assign meaning to them. Um, how that happens, but you can clearly see that there's room in here to argue about stuff and. Uh, if you're willing to just accept that you get these concepts with meanings, these types, then you can get around the problem by sort of basically hedging and say, well, the tokens themselves don't matter. It's the type that really matters. So, yeah. Now, if you're just willing to do that, that's fine. I don't know who everyone who's willing to just go sort of platonic that we have these types in our head that, we, that are instantiated by things in the world, the tokens. Okay, any further questions on this?